Live from Akwacha Studios in Blanta, this is the latest edition of NBC News with me, Kumbukani Piri, and uh, Townsend Kamalata, our sign language interpreter tonight. Our top stories. President Chokwera expresses satisfaction on the progress of his wealth creation vision for Malawi as evidenced by the success of the National Economic Empowerment Fund, NIF. Concerned teachers of Malawi applaud government for its quick response to their calls regarding the teacher registration process in the country. And in sports, the Football Association of Malawi FAM assures sponsors NBS Bank that over 60% of the fans from its partnership will be channeled to the teams. Well, I'm glad you could join us. President Dr. Lazarus Chokwera has expressed pride on the progress of his wealth creation vision for Malawi, citing the success of the National Economic Empowerment Fund, NIF. Speaking in Balaka during the 100 billion kwacha loan disbursement celebrations and launch of NIF second phase program, Dr. Chakwera noted that his administration has fulfilled its promise of prioritizing wealth creation, job creation and food security. Blessings Chileuka has the details. Upon arrival at Balaka Stadium, President Dr. Lazarus Yakwera inspected selected pavilions of beneficiaries of NIF before he launched the second phase loan disbursement drive. In his speech, Dr. Chakwera highlighted that under his administration, NIF has disbursed over 100 billion kwacha in loans to Malawians, generating numerous job opportunities within the four years he has been in power. Dr. Chakwera then announced that the second phase of NIF loan disbursement to worth 350 billion kwacha will benefit more people, transforming lives and empowering Malawians economically. The Malawi leader also urged NIF and government officials not to politicize the loans by ensuring everyone benefits regardless of one's political affiliations. Speaking area, Finance Minister Simplex Sichola Banda stated that NIF has positively impacted all sectors of the economy, including generating foreign exchange through increased tobacco farming, among others. Malawi Congress Party MCP Secretary General Esniwa Nkaka praised Dr. Chakura's visionary leadership, citing initiatives like the reintroduction of the Beira Lilongwe train route after a 21-year break. He said this is a manifestation of government's commitment to transform this country. Jeff Tam Tema, chairperson for NIF, said it is commendable that more people are now servicing their loans and the second phase more people will benefit. We believe that you will continue to support NIF as you desire to uplift the lives of Malawians through this organization. Your Excellency, I will be failing in my role as chairperson of NIF if I do not acknowledge the relentless efforts of the Chief Executive Officer of NIF and his management and the entire staff in ensuring that Malawians in Irurwe in Insanje, Maganjira in Mangoshi, Rigoma Island, and Wenya in Chitiba, and many other hard to reach areas are saved. Your Excellency, I am aware that uh, we have gone to every part of the country. And some of the roads, for example, in April, we were in Balaka. We went to rural areas in Balaka. I have seen the areas where they work. In those rural areas, we have groups that received runs. Member of Parliament for Balaka West, Beth and Dewere, commended Dr. Chakwera for depoliticizing NIF loans, which has helped people of all political parties to benefit. Blessings, Ijereuka, MBC, Balaka. Earlier in the day, Dr. Chakwera toured Demetia Megafon and Portland Simmons and commended them for embarking on projects that are in line with government's development agenda. The two entities are engaged in mega farming, infrastructure development, manufacturing and mining, respectively. Chibirum Tumodzi reports. The activities of Demeter Mega Farm and Portland Cement in Balaka both complement government's ATM strategy. 
through massive irrigation and use of mechanized equipment, Demeda Mega Farm seamlessly grows beans throughout the year and like clockwork delivers on a mission to produce food that can help feed the nation. The farm has demonstrated to the state president that the mega farm's concept is workable and needs to be adopted on a larger scale. The president was also taken through currently the biggest abattoir in the country, which enables Demeter Farm to supply meat products across the country. President Dr. Lazarus Chakwera is upbeat about the concept and is impressed with the work at Demeter Mega Farm. At the new site for the Portland cement plant, President Jaguera witnessed how the factory once commissioned with production of cement on a larger scale will increase the company's production levels from 300 tons to 2,000 tons annually. The integrated plant will also produce clinker, which is an essential raw material for cement manufacturing. According to Portland Cement Management, once the plant is operational, the company will save up to 50 million US dollars worth of forex, which they have been spending to import clinker from Zambia. The company has since appealed to President Chakwera to help the company identify forex worth 85 million US dollars without any struggles, so that they can ship machinery into the country by the end of August before the construction commences in September this year. The construction of the Portland Cement Integrated Plant will boost the mining industry in the country through the mining of limestone whose deposits are already available in Balaga. Chipirion Tumodzi, NBC News, Balaga. The World Bank has commended the government of Malawi for responding quickly and assisting people that have been affected by climatic shocks by providing them with social cash transfers in the light of challenges like food shortage. World Bank Country Director said this in Lilongwe when his organization launched the Malawi Economic Monitor, which is an analysis of Malawi's economic performance in the last six months. He said his organization, as well as other international partners, will work with Malawi to ensure that the program is strengthened so that it helps in lessening challenges which the poor are facing. From Lilongwe, Patrick Dambola reports. The Malawi Economic Monitor analyzes economic and structural development issues in Malawi and it comes out twice in a year. The report, which has been compiled by economic experts from the World Bank, has observed that Malawi's economic growth fell short of expectations in 2023 due to climatic shocks such as El Nino, which induced drought, thereby resulting in a weak harvest of staple foods for the country, just as it has been the case with other countries within the region. The report says such climatic shocks have had an impact on the country's macroeconomic situation which needs to be managed to put the economy back on track. The report also says due to such challenges, many households are expected to enter the 2024-2025 lean season with limited food stocks and depleted finances, among other challenges. However, the report has applauded the government of Malawi for its swift action through social protection programs that have helped to cushion the shocks which would have otherwise badly affected the poor in the country. Nathan Berete is World Bank Country Director for Malawi, Tanzania, Zambia and Zimbabwe. We commend the government of Malawi and all its partners in what has been achieved under this program. Um, what we see was just 10 years ago that the number of people that were benefiting from this program was uh, uh, a fraction of almost what is today, which is 1.2 million people. And we think this is super, super important because uh, social protection and adaptive safety nets not only provide um, an immediate response mechanism for poor and vulnerable, but it also stimulates uh, the, the economy more, uh, more broadly. So in addition to protecting livelihoods, it also has a way of supporting the broader economy. Minister of Gender, Jean Sendeza, says the report will help to guide Malawi to improve further social protection programs. She says the country will strengthen social protection programs until it gets out of the situation it is in, just like it has been the case with the surrounding countries. Due to the issues of the economic crisis, that's why we are saying that the social cash transfer is the best way to go and there is need to do more. And in doing more, we have to learn because in the report, we have seen that our colleagues in Zambia, in Mozambique, they were in the same situation as we are in, uh, as we are talking, but they have moved 
a step forward. So we have to learn from our colleagues on how they have done, uh, uh, on, on how they have you know, managed to get out of the, uh, the crisis, the economic crisis that they are in. Moving forward, the World Bank has advised Malawi to strengthen its social protection programs by expanding coverage and accurately identifying the needy so as to better respond to the objectives of the program. Patrick Dambula, MPC News, Lilongwe. Government has reaffirmed its commitment to addressing caps in the housing sector to promote the provision of sustainable and quality housing and efficient urban development services in the country. Minister of Lands, Dos Gumba, was speaking after touring a site where Malawi's first ever national housing symposium will be held from the 29th to the 30th of July. In Lilongwe. The theme of the symposium is sustainable and affordable housing in pursuit of Malawi 2063. Details in this report found by Yamigani Simtoe but read by Helix Manimba. Speaking after inspecting the site, Minister of Lands Deus Gumba said the symposium will accord government and its stakeholders space to review the country's housing policy to create an enabling environment that will encourage provision of quality, sustainable and affordable housing for income groups in line with the Malawi 2063. A very important platform where we want to tell Malawians all of the demonstrate uh, looking at 2063 as to how as a country we want to move in terms of uh, construction of houses looking at Division 2063 to provide affordable houses, but also very resilient in terms of the climate changes that we're experiencing as a country. The symposium will gather different players in the housing sector, including the Catholic Relief Services Malawi, whose country director is Sekai Modon. This symposium is very important in Malawi because the housing needs are very great and it's important for different partners to come together and, and, and look at ways in which they can construct houses for many of the vulnerable people in Malawi, considering that Malawi is impacted negatively in a big way due to climate shocks that happen from time to time. Earlier on, the minister toured a site where Malawi Housing Corporation is expected to construct its head office in Lirongwe. Board chairperson for Malawi Housing Corporation is Reverend Jalek David Kajipanda. Lately we have moved from Blanca where we had the head office, but because of maybe some administrative challenges, we felt like we would be better be situated at the center. So coming in a long way, it would mean it would be easier even to reach out to the north, to the east, uh, to the south, and even to the west. So the head of state has honored us because he is now the one who is going to do the groundbreaking. So it's just coinciding exactly with the very time that we are having this symposium. President Dr. Lazarus Makathi Chakwera is expected to attend the first ever national housing symposium to be hosted by Habitat for Humanity. You're watching NBC News with me, Kumbukani Piri, and uh, my sign language interpreter tonight is Talson Kamalata. Remember, you can access all NBC digital platforms by scanning the QR code at the top left corner of your TV screen, the headlines. And now President Chokwera expresses satisfaction on the progress of his wealth creation vision for Malawi as evidenced by the success of the National Economic Empowerment Fund, NIF. Concerned teachers of Malawi applaud government for its quick response to their calls regarding the teacher registration process in the country. And in sports, the Football Association of Malawi FAM assures sponsors NBS Bank that over 60% of the fans from its partnership will be channeled to the teams. Discover the power of informed credit decisions with Credit Data CRB. We are your reliable source for comprehensive credit information. Credit Data CRB specializes in collecting and consolidating credit information, providing credit reports that empower financial institutions, lenders, and credit providers. Our rich credit information allows lenders to assess the creditworthiness of their clients, making calculated and manageable credit risk decisions. We provide accurate data to promote responsible lending practices. Trust Credit Data CRB for reliable and timely credit reports. Make confident credit decision today.
Credit Data CRB does not give lenders an opinion about whether one should get credit or not. Credit data. Welcome back to NBC News. Concerned teachers of Malawi have expressed satisfaction with government's quick response to their calls regarding the teacher registration process in the country. Speaking in Lilongwe, the group's, the group's secretary, Aziz Losa, said among others they requested government through Teachers Council of Malawi to address issues to do with payment as well as system accessibility. He however pleaded with authorities to consider employing the auxiliary teachers on permanent basis. He spoke to Tokozani Jumpa. We are happy that the government has a uh, recruited about 4,200 auxiliary teachers. But just recruiting them on a temporary basis, we think that it's not secure. So we are asking the ministry to employ them fully. They have to be on a permanent job so that they have to secure their jobs. And uh, upon recruiting, uh, recruiting them permanently, these 4,200 teachers, we wanted them also to add more auxiliary teachers so that they should uh, reduce this issue of uh, learner-pupil ratio. In our schools, we have that big gap between teacher and learner ratio. So we want them to recruit more auxiliary teachers on top of this being recruited permanently. In other ways, you are saying that you are satisfied with the response from Teachers Council. Yes, uh, we are satisfied with the response from Teachers Council. We say so because what we wrote in our petition has been answered. So we don't have more questions. That question we have to Teachers Council is now to sensitize zone by zone, school by school, because they have managed to reach to our districts. So we are here to ask them to sensitize zone by zone and school by school. ACOM has held Lusangazi Dairy Cooperative for using the grant of five million kwacha prudently to construct a maize shelter that produced feed for dairy livestock. National coordinator for AGCOM, Ted Nakuma, made the remarks following reports that Lusangazi Dairy Cooperative has started delivering results from the grant and has since asked other groups to learn from them. Joel Nkata has details in this report read by George Ngandawiri. As one way of supporting agricultural mechanization and improving agricultural productivity, the government through AGCOM has been providing financial assistance in form of grants to farmers and cooperatives across the country. One of the beneficiaries of AGCOM One project is now thriving following the construction of a new feeder shaler and mixing plant that produces feed for livestock in the area. The chairperson for the cooperative, Hesco Banda, said the feeder shaler and mixing plant has eased the feeding process dairy farmers used to encounter in the area. We have greatly benefited from the feed share and feed mixing plant. Before, we were unable to make daily mash, which is essential in milk production. As of now, we are capable of making daily mash, which boosts milk production in daily livestock. As such, farmers are able to yield more milk and make more money. However, the challenge we are facing is scarcity of soya beans, which is farmed in distant areas which in return incurs transport costs. One of the members of the cooperative, Angela Kaunda, said that before the installation of the feed shaler machine, the cooperative used to face challenges when sourcing supplemental feed for her daily livestock. The coming of the feed shaler and mixing plant has greatly benefited us. We now make supplementary feed on our own, which previously was impossible. But as of now, we can make supplementary feed ourselves, which is cost effective, and in return, we have noted a significant increase in the amount of milk in the cattle producers. Ted Nankuma expressed his joy over the management of funds by Usangazi and asked other beneficiaries to follow the example set by the cooperative. As I could support any activities or uh, business plans that suggest you know, commercialization. So Lusangazi submitted a proposal to procure dairy animals. These, these are improved breeds, but also to renovate their milk uh, backing group house, but also to procure feed mix plants, uh, plus also renovate some of the collars for their farmers. And that's what we have to do, and we are happy that they utilize the resources 
Yeah. Agriculture commercialization, ICOM, is a Malawi government flagship program that is giving out grants to farmers across Malawi with an aim of transforming smallholder agriculture from subsistence to commercial farming. Controller of Statutory Corporations, Peter Simbani, has urged commercial statutory corporations to convert their losses into profits to reduce their reliance on government bailouts. He made this call during his keynote address at the Corporate Governance Orientation Workshop held at Nkopola Lodge in Lilongwe. Simbani emphasized that entities such as ESKIM and the Water Boards were established to be self-sustaining and operationally independent, but at times they ask for bailout from Treasury. Details in this report. The Board of Directors of various statutory corporations are convening at a corporate governance workshop in Mangochi to refresh their knowledge on critical issues relevant to their organizations and roles. Opening the workshop, Comptroller of Statutory Corporations, Peter Simbani, praised the organizations for their strong performance. However, he urged commercial entities to find effective ways to turn their losses into profits to reduce their reliance on government bailouts. Those that are classified as commercial entities, they are coming back to government to say, please, uh, bail us on, give us a bail out on this. Give us a bail. So that's the message that I was trying to emphasize, that when government was creating them, the intention that they should make money, but that since they are commercial entities, it is the expectation of government as the shareholder to receive a dividend. Because you, when you create the company, it is expected that are going to uh, uh, reap from the profits that they make so that you also uh, see the uh, benefit of having uh, such a company. During her presentation, Ombudsman Grace Malera emphasized on the importance of maintaining integrity, particularly in the recruitment process for her positions. The key message today was they need to know uh, the ambit within which they are supposed to operate. Uh, the basic principles that they are supposed to follow, issues that they should avoid unreasonable decisions, they should make fair decisions, they should follow due process, and so on and so forth, including the rules of natural justice. Reverend Vasco Kajipapa, the board chairperson for the Malawi Broadcasting Corporation, MBC, acknowledged the importance of upholding integrity at all times and stated that MBC is performing well in this regard. I am proud to say that uh, the integrity at MPC is uh, evident. People should be able to speak even behind us that we are doing a good job. I know that we are not yet there, so we are yet to improve the areas that we might be lacking behind. Board members and senior officers from fully subvented, semi-subvented and commercial statutory corporations are participating in the workshop. Dave Umar, NBC News, Mangochi. And now to sports. The Football Association of Malawi FAM has assured sponsors NBS Bank and the soccer fraternity that over 60% of the fans from its partnership with the bank will go towards the teams. FAM President Foot Fleetwood Haya said this in Blantyre on Wednesday when the two parties unveiled a 982 million kwacha sponsorship towards the newly established National Division League. Norbert Jameson has details. The three-year deal will run from next year until the year 2027 with the package covering all those years. In his speech, Haya said his association is committed to making sure that it is the teams that benefit more from the package. We are going to make sure that under my leadership, our Football Association of Malawi is going to take the path of being transparent and accountable. And not only that, we also indicated that the monies that we are going to get from our sponsorship, it has to benefit the rightful people. I'm talking of the teams, I'm talking of the players who indeed sweat on the ground. I can assure you that the money which is coming from NBS, more than 60% of this sponsorship is going to go to the teams. In his remarks, NBS Bank Chief Executive Officer Kwani Rengwenya said they expect the competition to produce stars who will shine on the international stage. In our three years we expect that uh, we'll produce really soccer stars that will play in the inter international stage. Like uh, we watch a lot of European, uh, European uh, soccer league and we want to see a Malawian playing in those leagues that will be coming out of this kind of engagement with national division. So we're looking forward to a very uh, robust 
uh, soccer development from grassroots up to Super League at the international stage. The NBS Bank National Division League will automatically become the second tier of Malawi football behind the Super League. The league will comprise 12 teams, which will be the cream from the regional leagues and some relegated from the Super League. This is a league which will produce teams to be promoted to the Super League. Norbert Jameson, NBC Sports. Well, that item also wraps up this edition of NBC News, a reminder of our top stories. President Chakwera expresses satisfaction on the progress of his wealth creation vision for Malawi as evidenced by the success of the National Economic Empowerment Fund, NIF. Concerned teachers of Malawi applaud government for its quick response to their calls regarding the teacher registration process in the country. And in sports, the Football Association of Malawi FAM assures sponsors NBS Bank that over 60% of the fans from its partnership will be channeled to the teams. For more on these and other stories, follow our online platforms, Facebook, X, and our website, mbc.mw. Remember, you can access all MBC digital platforms by scanning the QR code at the top right corner of your TV screen, the headlines. I'm Gumbu Kanipiri, and Talson Kamalata was our sign language interpreter tonight. Thanks for watching, and good night.